Thanks for stopping in at the Down the Road Show podcast brought to you by the Murdoch Worldwide Entertainment Network on the Down the Road Show YouTube channel and Chronicles of Comic-Con YouTube channel. You're also listening to this audio podcast wherever it's available. We are sponsored by my favorite people out there, Everyday Natural Products. They got this wonderful CBD pet friendly. It's great. My dog has all kinds of anxiety, so this is good for her. But they got all kinds of other great things out there to help with your mental health and your own personal health health to get you right. So check them out at empstore.com. And they're giving all of our listeners and followers a 20% discount by using down the road promo code. So make sure you check them out. Like I always say, try it yourself to see what works for you at empstore.com. Very excited to bring in our next guest. Her name is Erica. How are you doing, Erica? Hello. Uh, she Welcome is, to my mess. I know. You are a busy woman. You do a lot of your own little production at home for uh, your fans and your followers. You are a, a sex expert and a certified life coach. So I'm sure that keeps you pretty, that pr- keeps you pretty busy. Yeah, well, I mean, the pandemic is doing something interesting. It's kind of forcing what's left of the real world to all go online. So it, it's kind of useful for those of us who are already online. I hate to say it, but yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, no, and it's true. And it is uh, helping draw, uh, drive traffic to, you know, areas people weren't looking at before. Now, you've done a lot of uh, guest uh, talking on the Playboy channel as well. Yes. Uh, what, what's what's that friends. like? Um, I started with Playboy when I was 19. So I was the weather girl for the Weekend Flash. And then we did Totally Busted, which was this hidden camera show. And that was really awesome because most prank shows, the prank is staged. But we really did it. They had no idea. It was so much fun. Like the fact that that was even an occupation just blows my mind. It's like a something you were doing when you were a kid and they're like now you get to do it as an adult but with your boobs out and we'll send you a paycheck um (laughs) this this sounds so much better than jackass i think so it it was like it was it was so great i mean you had to do it like three times because every once in a while someone would be like am i on a show this can't really be happening but the advantage is when boobs are out people tend to not think so they don't go, you know, this is kind of odd. Maybe I'm on some show. They're just like, no, this seems like my fantasy is coming true. So I'm just going to go with that. So it was, it was a lot easier than you would think. And then there was Canoga Park and then um, the morning show. So it really like started to feel like a, a second home to me. And I don't know how much you know about Playboy, but they sold out. The foreign company owns them now. Hefner's not with us anymore. So it's, but at the same time, I'm glad like I rode out the wave because it would be kind of sad that everyone is still having fun and I'm just on the sidelines now. Like, no, I wrote it out until it was, until it was gone. And you, and you got to be there during the heyday too. when you know, uh, you got to hang out in the grotto, the Playboy Mansion back when it was party central. Yes. Can you believe they just, they just ripped the grotto out of the ground the other week. Crazy. Which which is, I mean, I've never been there. I've I was invited to the Playboy Mansion once for a party by some friends, and I couldn't make it. So, like, I missed my one and only chance to go there. <laughs> and so, now it's, I don't even know what it's going to become. What do you do with that place? Yeah, I mean, who can really, you know, it's like a, it's like Michael Jackson's old place. Like, who can, first of all, afford it? Yeah. And, and uh, second of all, who who's going to want to take it and all that history? Like, I mean, who's the idiot but that's going to tear estate. that down? Yeah, the real estate alone, right. though. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth a ton. Uh, they could oh, tear yeah. that down and put in a theme park if they wanted. <laughs> a Playboy theme park. That was even back in the day. They had the best haunted houses, and I mean, it was so entertaining there. Yeah, I mean, it, way long ago. Well, I mean, they had, they had one of the one of the coolest gentlemen's clubs ever in Chicago back in like the seventies. The Playboy Club. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. That, and now it's so interesting because that genre. The it's not quite porn, uh, but it's too risque for mainstream. That genre, it doesn't really have a home. No. I feel like the mainstream community is very much like you've had your boobs out, so you 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 don't belong with us. And then the porn community is like you're not taking you know, dicks up your vag, so you don't belong with us either. So then where where are you when you're comfortable with your sexuality, but you don't want to go that far, but you also don't want to tame it down to that degree. This shade of gray i feel like it has no home currently 
yeah, well, we're definitely in a shame culture for sure in the days of, uh, I mean, I grew up in the days of Skinamax as we referred to it, so, uh, but yeah, we're, I mean, we're definitely in a, a shame spiral, shame culture, and uh, it's, uh, that's why I love, I, I love, the, I love the, the memes going around, the phrase, you know, fi fix each other's crowns, don't tear it down. Oh, yeah. Uh, for woman it's, power. It's mind boggling I mean, to me, particularly now when the first lady has a history of nude modeling. So I find it very interesting that we're still trying to say that that's like, did you hear about the mechanic who was just fired because she had an OnlyFans page? What? It, she was a very cute 24 year old girl, epic mechanic, too. I mean, she was amazing. And they fired her because they said, we don't want that associated with our business. And that's so uncool as if she, I'm rolling she my eyes so hard for everyone on the audio podcast <laughs> <laughs> um to, to, for people who don't know what fans only is you have your own fans only tell people what fans only is only fans is a fascinating little platform I feel like I was a little bit uh behind and I didn't think big enough because I created something called custom dream models because when I was with playboy I quickly got very annoyed with shooting with a company and then a week later it's available on 7,000 different websites for free. And yeah, and even Where's though you don't pay for the day, it's not worth it to do now that it's everywhere. So I thought this is really annoying. You should be able to do just for that one person or just for a small group of people. And, and that's when I started CDM, but then only fans one up me and patrons, which is basically just a way for women to shoot or men to shoot content for a small demographic, their fan base, and it can't get out because it's, it's just here. It's, it's great. It's, I really wish it had been around uh, when I started. Yeah, for complete control. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. that's one thing we didn't have when everything went from, you know, paper to digital. It was like you lost complete control and you're you were just out there. Yeah, and and there's so many. I mean, just even in the convention world that I'm from, you know, you can see behind me here uh, with uh, cosplay models and stuff. Like, you know, there, there's a lot of shade in us out there, and you really got to be careful with the photographers you're working with as well. And pay attention to those the small print in your contracts to see what they're doing with your photos. Right, because you're shooting that, you're putting a lot of love and effort into that one day and then everybody on earth is just taking advantage of it and there it, there it goes. That's why I hate companies like Pornhub and then I know the girls are like, you can't beat them, join them, so they're, they're on that wagon, but it's just a bunch of content from all over the web, a lot of it's stolen, just whoop, put into one place so that the girls aren't making money anymore. Yeah, which is is not fair, and uh, especially like like you're talking about comfortableness, uh, and you know we got kind of a we. It seems like we went backwards the last fifth, ten to fifteen years with the body shaming and our comfortableness that we oh, were God. finally getting used to. How important is it to be comfortable in your body? Because like I got a bunch of friends with you know body dysmorphia and whatnot. So how important is it to see beautiful women like you out there going, "Hey, look, I'm not ashamed of who I am." Well, we, we, by, by focusing on the discomfort and like the things that we want to change about ourselves, we're just creating this destructive pattern instead of really, I mean, first of all, if we want to change things about ourselves, we, we would, you know, someone that, that wants to lose a hundred pounds. I have a, my business partner just lost 120 pounds just from awesome. eliminating carbs, which is crazy to me, but he did it because he wanted to there, the, where there's a will, there's a way. And these people that don't like aspects of themselves it's sad that they're insecure but then they lash out at other people who maybe are confident in those areas and it just creates this animosity and and disputes and they lose friendship when it's like but why i mean the human body is amazing and magical and it, and, and everyone has different tastes. I mean, one person looks at something and goes, oh, that's horrible. And the next person's like, where has that been all my life? So it's, it, we don't want to get too stuck in this little box and forget that we have the means to just open it up and, <laughs> and not be in a box. Yeah, uh, no, exactly. Uh, it, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 45. I come from the age of grunge. We did, uh, I'm X generation. We did everything we could to like, you don't put me in a box. I don't belong in a box. Yes. Forget, forget labels and everything. And now here we are in 2020 and it's like everything's being completely relabeled. Oh my God, this needs label drives me crazy. 
I mean, even with politics, like Democrat versus a Republican, I feel like very few people fit perfectly into either of those boxes, but they're like, nope, you have to, you have to try to put yourself in here or else we can't have this argument. It's like, oh, but why? Why can't we just be who we are? And it's just different and beautiful. I think that scares people because they need to define things. They have to be like, that's black, that's white, I know. They can't be like, I don't know what that is. I'll have to wait and see. It's just too much uncertainty for them. Because it's easier to live a life in fear and judge everything based on fear instead of living a life of love and just accepting and being. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like we have, we're, we're such ironic creatures. We have a need for certainty, but we have a need for uncertainty. And if one of those needs aren't met, we go crazy. And it's they contradict each other. That's why I always say the key to happiness is knowing how to juggle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I talk about that all the time in my uh, Facebook rants uh, about balance, <laughs> proper balance in life. And, yes. and, and that's exactly it, juggling, juggling your own emotions uh, versus, you know, other people's emotions, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're saying, you know, juggling life in general. Oh, yeah, big time. And it's, it's a lifelong process. Exactly, yeah, it's your final. Always growing, never stop. You, you figure stopped. out how to juggle, someone throws one more object in there, and you're like, son of a... <laughs> oh, wasn't expecting the like, chainsaw! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, let, well, let's get... Since so many of my uh, viewers and listeners are extremely introverted nerds from the Comic-Con world and, you know, love their comic books, and uh, they all want to have that superhero identity where they can get out of their shell and become someone else and be a little more confident. How important is it to have confidence as a man when you're picking up on a woman? It's the most important thing. It really is. It goes back to that kind of uncertainty that people feel like, is this person right? Is this person what I'm trying? I don't know. But if you're uber confident, then it's like, well, he must have what I need. I mean, he seems like he knows that I need that. So, you know, it, it's like your confidence overrides her uncertainty. So it, it's, it's so damn important. And I feel like what's happening right now is, is also kind of a good dating ground for those that are more introverted. You know, you can think before you text, you can put that effort in. Yeah, it's really nice. Like this is an introvert's paradise. Think about what you're saying before you slide into their DMs. Yep. And if you have that awkward pause and the sweaty palms, she just doesn't have to see that. You know, it's, it's really nice. And then by the time you meet in person, you've built up a confidence with the relationship and with yourself. <laughs> Ball just flew at the um, window over here. Jesus. <sighs> that just made me jump out of my skin. Funny. That was That was so loud in my headphones. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even, oh my God. <sighs> no, that was awesome. I, I, I hope everybody at home just kind of maybe wet themselves a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, no, and, 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 okay, once again, age myself for all of my listeners and viewers out there. I'm 45. I come from an age before smartphones, before technology. I used to make mixtapes off the radio, and that's how I got every girlfriend in junior high. These kids don't understand it, and I, I think because of technology, and they're lacking certain face-to-face, -face, you know, uh, the skills. The effort isn't there. Yeah, the, the effort isn't there, and they're lacking what you those just said personal about skills. A tape. I feel like nobody does anything that's even equivalent to that anymore. They just slide into DMs with a few words, and, and the effort, I, I, I mean, take that guy who does little Simpsons drawings. Uh, he has a lot of uh, girls who are very, oh, he's amazing, he's wonderful, because he does this cute little thing that makes them feel special. And it's just finding something that you're good at, maybe, and, 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 and adding value. I think when you tell people they have to add value in some shape or form, they're like, so I should just give her money? And it's like, I mean, that's nice, <laughs> but <laughs> that's not what it, you know, that's not every you can add value in so many different ways. I think people get a little confused by that and they start like walking her dog and cleaning her house and then get permanently friend zoned and extremely hostile because they feel taken advantage of. Right. There's nothing wrong with the friend zone. I've friend zoned some females and well, you know, they end up hostile too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think the friend zone, the best, uh, the best way to deal with a friend zone is, is you either, you have to act 
and, and get out of the friend zone and maybe you lose that friend or just be okay with being in the friend zone and then potentially it could blossom into something. The worst case is when they're in the friend zone and they hate being in the friend zone and they're so unhappy and they keep attacking her because they're being passive aggressive. They're like, but I walked your dog like 10 miles yesterday. The dog, the dog appreciates it. Yes. <laughs> yes, and if you're gonna walk the dog, do it for the dog. Don't do it because you think she's gonna have sex with you afterwards. Ex exactly. Look, there's a time and a place to be a pervert. Let them decide the time and place. Exactly. Yeah. Plus, there's websites now. Like, if, if you don't even want to play by the rules, you don't want to have to woo her. You just want to be like, I am horny. There are websites just for that where it's acceptable and okay. So maybe, you know, don't send dick pics on Instagram. But ever. there are places. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> just don't send dick pics ever. I never ever have, and I don't understand that. Like, look, okay, I'll go on a quick little rant here. My my sister does hiring. She hires for other companies. My niece, oh, no. my niece, who's freaking amazing woman, single mother, like hires for the job she's been working for the last. And yet, people who are trying to get jobs from these wonderful goddess oh, women of in my family are asking them out and sending them dick pics. Like, that's not, first of all, how you get a job. That's not how you <laughs> act like a stand-up human being or man, period. And third, that's just, that, that's, that's what I'm talking about, a generation that grew up without this face-to-face -face thing and, they, and all on technology. They're all in their 20s now. And they don't understand how to be a real human, it seems like. Oh, yeah. I'm wondering if the stupidity was always like that or if it's now it's just more prevalent because of technology. It's as a man, we're all stupid. I say this to every woman who comes to me for dating advice, treat us like a dumb child. The dumber you <laughs> talk to us, the more we will understand. So yes, it's always been there, but all the shit I did in my twenties wasn't online. <laughs> Thank there God for that. Right. Thank, right. God, thank God there was not this kind of technology when I was in my 20s because I wasn't perfect. I did some stupid shit, said some stupid <laughs> shit, party too hard. And, you know, I was not the perfect gentleman, but I nowhere near this class of man now. But which brings up a whole nother point. Like, look, just because somebody's giving you a little money on your fan only and whatnot, that's also not a way to get to date you. Right. Uh, and I, I think there's there, there's it's. It's, cr it's confusing a lot of guys because if you pay her regularly and she flirts with you, it, the, he thinks he might have a chance. And uh, it, it always, it's so frustrating to me because I see so many men that are just great guys. They're really great guys. They're not bad looking. They have so much to offer, but they choose to chase after some girl that requires a paid membership in order to talk to them. And it's like, she's, she's just making a living. She's doing what she needs to do. It's not about her. It's just putting all that weight on her. And then it gets to the point where they feel rejected and then their self-esteem starts to suffer. And then they're like, no girl ever and is gonna like me. They, and then they lash out. Your chump yes. change does not make you her sugar daddy. And that's, that's, and it's just, it's just this domino effect and it affects everything. And I just, I wish it's, it sounds horrible to say like date within your number. Ah. You know, it's, it sounds awful. And, and I don't mean it as just a superficial thing. I, I mean, like, you know, if she has a PhD and, and he hasn't finished the sixth grade and she's really into intellectual conversation and he can't keep up, like, don't try to, you know, it's it can it can apply to anything, but it's just it, it's like we're not born with this uh, ability to assess like okay what what am I what do I have to offer maybe I can improve these things so that I could expect more from my mate but if I'm not gonna shower all week and I just don't give an f I can't expect to date a supermodel. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a mom. I wash my hair sometimes once every two weeks. So. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I, you know, that, that, that felt like a direct, <laughs> that felt like a direct remark because of my comments to you earlier on Instagram, like, <laughs> wasn't wait, sure wait. we were doing this podcast today, and I was going to have a lazy day, so the only reason <laughs> I even showered today was for you, so. <laughs> oh, no, come on. <laughs> but, 
other than that, I'm, you know, I'm a regular shower. I like to stay clean, which is also like good mental health advice right now in quarantine. Like people are staying at home. Nobody's seeing them shower, take a shower and feel good. You are getting attacked by some aliens. Take a oh shower, take a shower because when you feel good on the outside, you feel good on the inside and that's going to help with your mental health. Oh yeah, that's the thing. It's like you sh some people who are very like anti the superficial. I I I get where they're coming from, and I approve of their decision to to kind of find happiness inside and not to be so superficial and, and be a deeper and vapid. person. It's yeah. great, but it takes away from the things that you would do to make yourself feel better. Like I have a I have a cousin who's a nurse right now. Um, and, and she does not do anything for herself. She cooks and, and, you know, she'll just forget about showering, forget about taking care of herself in any way. She won't even sit down and do some breathing exercises and she's miserable. And sometimes you have to, it's like, if you're going to pour your cup out, you have to make sure your cup's full. You got to first fill it. It's like that silly, um, not silly, it's serious. When you have to put that mask on in the plane before you help the people around you the same exact thing you just like working out yes you get perky buns but you feel better it like helps your hormones and it's like your cortisol levels and you can take all that frustration that maybe you were about to take out on like kim kardashian's posts on instagram and now you know channeled into the workout i'm gonna shut up about the kim kardashian thing not a fan of the family anyway uh no me neither but um but, I just but I'm not out there. Like, I'm not out there attacking them either, for that matter. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I mean, constant these people on social media and YouTube that are so angry. I'm just thinking, like, what? They're obviously they need something. They need and and lashing out at people is not the solution. Right. Right. And and that's important though. And and all of what you're talking about there is self-realization, and uh, it, I, it's just no most what. I don't want to look inside people like I've done some stupid and said some stupid shit, but guess what? We got to look inside. That's the only way we realize who we really are and we can grow as a human. Yeah. And accepting some of the stuff we see is just not ideal. You know, it's like, Oh, that's there. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> How do I now accept this or change it or, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and it's not a superficial thing to be, look, you're attracted to what you're attracted to. It's it's not uh, it's not a superficial thing. Like you know, people like what they like. It is what it is. And uh, kind of like, I I I like a I like a thick woman. And I used to tell this to my sister all the time. And by that I meant you know, someone who's athletic or just beyond athletic, but like you know, thick, which is now huge popular. T h i c c thick. So that's the kind of thing I've been talking about. My sister's like, you can't call women fat. I'm like, I'm not calling them fat. Like, it's that's not that. And you gotta understand, you gotta understand who you are. Like, look, look, I know I'm a six. <laughs> I'm okay with being a six. When I was at my best looking, I was maybe a seven. Okay. <laughs> but I've also got personality and character. I'm a good human being. So that gives me an extra point. So sometimes I'm a seven or an eight. I'm a former musician, and I knew when I was on stage, I was always a 10. But that was when I was on stage. <laughs> it, it's and and it's okay knowing your numbers and dating with inside your numbers, like what you're saying. There's nothing wrong with that, people. I know I hate saying it because it sounds so bad, but I mean it's it Not creates so many problems. And of course, you constantly see like a supermodel dating this, you know, just someone that you would never think. They don't have the money. They're obese. They're unattractive. And, and they then don't every, have much of a personality. But and then every jerk guy is like, oh, he must be rich. He must have a giant penis. Blah 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 blah. I don't know. Maybe he's just a good dude. There's something, you know. And and then they, I think they see those examples, and then that it just sets a, it, it sets them up for failure sometimes. Right. Exactly. It's a, It's that. It's a false narrative. Uh, so. So what other, I don't know, life coaching sexpert advice do you have for the introverted nerd besides, you know, dating in their own ranks? Um, what's, the, a, what, what's the best way? Okay, you've met a woman, you've started dating. How do you keep a woman? Keeping her, that's, that's where it gets interesting. Um, women have a, a few advantages because we we like all to the advantages you guys are goddesses and we're idiots anyway go ahead no i think it's 
uh, like a woman can leave a conversation without you have said, like you said, maybe three words and he's, oh, that's the most amazing conversation. I feel like you really listen to me. Like things like that really make a girl feel connected. Like I even suggest to guys when they're talking to a girl, maybe take some notes here and there. Like every once in a while when you hear her say something kind of important, like, I don't know, my cat Fifi, you know, it, he died when he was eight and I just really miss Fifi. And, and then she changed the subject. And you bring that up at a later date, you know, oh, a mental note, yeah. kind of look, you like you described Fifi and it's like, wait, you remember how I described Fifi? And those little moments make her just feel a connection over and over again. Yeah. Of course, in, you know, in, not to be overboard with it, but just here and there, little tiny things, they make such a big difference. Guys really don't listen. If you, if you interview people in relationships, that's the number one thing they say. He said he was going to do this. He never listens. And that just being able to listen is, is such an amazing skill and doesn't right. require going to the gym. No. And, 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 as humans, don't we all want to be listened to, understood, and have that connection? Definitely. Yeah, and that's so. what's really important. I think that that's another advantage about the current situation is it helps because lust is such a is such a fun drug, you know? You, it's so overwhelming. And, and then you, when you don't know this person, you can fill in the blanks. You can be like, well, I'm attracted to them. I don't know anything else, but I bet they're romantic and I bet they're a great listener and I bet they're good in bed and you can just create this person. So uh, right <laughs> Until on, you get them in bed and then it's just like, oh God. Uh, it's all downhill, yeah. Cause that's what, well, that's what we do when we meet someone cause we're little romantics at heart and we can't help but think maybe this person is just everything I imagined a, a, a person would be. And that's the biggest killer of not just relationships but jobs and just things in life in general is setting your expectations too high right and then of course we don't want to have our expectations down low it's just finding that middle ground yeah well i'm not saying you should settle i'm just yeah I'm, no. I'm a, i've never settled but i mean expectations expectations are important but you can't rely on not everything's gonna meet your expectations it's all about compromise in life right and in, and in a relationship one of the things I tell people in relationships is if you find someone that's 60 to 70% of what you want most of the time, huge win. Like, I mean, there's just never going to be anyone that checks all your ducks 100% of the time. All, it's totally impossible. Does not exist. Yeah, she, so, she's so right about that. And then you let them go and you don't ever find anyone like them again for the rest of your life. Trust me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Not speaking they from experience here. <laughs> you know that you're in married when one day you wake up, look at your partner and go, what the fuck have I done? You know, that's, but it's true. That's totally normal. It doesn't mean you should get a divorce. It means you're a normal human who's right. second guessing your crazy long-term decision that you just made. Right. And well, kind of like the old saying that uh, a woman's truly not in love if she hasn't woken up in the middle of the night at one point and thought about killing him. <laughs> That's probably accurate, and I think we, we're, so, we're in a society now where people are like, okay, today I don't like you, so I think we should just get a divorce, and like, it's, it's very, people were happier back in the day, actually, when it was easier, when you interview people that are, that have been married for 60, 70 years, the way they describe even meeting each other is just like, well, there was only really three other girls in the area, and I mean, I didn't like the other two, so... Yeah, well, that's I mean, how he met. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> kind of funny. Growing up in Utah, like I, and and California, I recently came to the realization, like, like I'm not attracted to blondes. That's just all that was available all the time. <laughs> so, uh, and also, I also came to the realization, I'm a lucky man. Like, I've never made the first move. Uh, so, uh, my my ex ex that's ex for a reason, like, would tell me like I had no game, and I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I got plenty. <laughs> And it wasn't until like a couple years ago I realized, man, I ain't got no game. Every single one of my girlfriends my entire life picked up on me and made all the first moves. Like, so. Well, that's also, see, that works for you and it might not work for other people. And that's another thing. I think people that are in this kind of line of work with helping with relationships and dating, they're like, these 10 things in a row. And it's like, that doesn't work. That's not at all how to go about things. Everybody is different. Like, 
a lot of girls love a guy who doesn't make a move because then it makes them feel kind of like, hey, maybe I'm, maybe these aren't working enough. And then they try harder to get your attention. And oh, they're working. <laughs> they're working. What, like what you said earlier, like, look, everybody loves boobs, men and women. Women get distracted by boobs. Men, we only have enough blood to work one brain at a time, <laughs> but even women like boobs. True. And babies. Everyone loves boobs. True. I, I, I love uh, babies and babies and dogs. <laughs> like, all of my animals are locked out of the office right now because when they come in here, they get pissed off and they don't want to stay in here and they just want to leave anyway. Aww. Now, you know, you're a dog lover. You, you got a dog at home, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what is it about the unconditional love of an animal? Dogs really do. They're, they're just the best thing on planet Earth. They're so much better than we are. We could be learning from them with that unconditional love and just the way, how they always find this thing to be excited about. And they're so happy about this little thing that they got yesterday and the day before and the day before that. And like, it's, it's really cool. And I think, you, I think you're happier with the dog. And it's a great way to meet people. <laughs> you're not lying. You get... <laughs> Take your puppy for a walk, and you're going to get more phone numbers than you ever will at a bar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and she's already on her knees, like, oh, this is a cute little baby. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, like, instant. Cute dog, instant chick magnet. It's such a great. Other places. Grocery store, vegetable market. I mean, women love a man that can cook. Oh, yeah. I, I did a whole video about skills because any skill you have, it's really in your best interest to kind of work on that one skill because women just love skill and that could be in any area, playing the guitar, illustrating, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And, and you're right, especially, especially creative things, you know, like cooking, art or music. And, you know, like I said, I know I'm a six, but I was a 10 when I was on stage and, and it's true. And I always say, you'll never find a better drug than performing live on stage for a live audience. You'll never have a better drunk, a better high, uh, the endorphins flowing through that, you know? And so when you do find some sort of creative outlet or some sort of skill that you're good at, that you can improve that you're talking about, that does raise your level of confidence. And oh, yeah. the more you have that on the inside, the more that projects outward. Yes. Getting chicks is just a bonus. Uh, always a bonus. Some people, that's their only thing they're working for. But, you know, you, you should be deeper than that in life. <laughs> yeah, but, you should be. But kind of like what you're talking about with, uh, it reminded me, you know, the glass half full. You can't give to other people if your glass is empty. And uh, as an empath, that took me like decades to learn. I just learned that like three or four years ago that, I was taking care of everybody and helping all these people, but like I wasn't taking care of myself. So how important is that self-care? And that same thing with that middle ground, because some people are all self-care and F everybody else. And then the other people are emptying out there. And so everyone's kind of unhappy. Right, this has right. been really kind of a, a rude awakening, um, kind of seeing how people have responded to this. I'm a little bit discouraged with humanity, I gotta say. Yeah, pff, uh, as uh, someone who loves humanity, I'm pretty ashamed of it as well. And But I always say, the longer, the longer you know someone, the more they're gonna show you their true colors. Yeah, or they're, they're locked inside and have no choice. Right, right, yeah. See, I'm disabled. I've been stuck at home for the last three years, pretty much. So oh. once, once all this, is done everybody gets to go back to their regular lives i'm still here so i feel i don't feel bad for anyone so everybody's like yeah, i'm going stir crazy and like i feel like i'm in prison i just want to slap people and tell them to shut the fuck up there's like three types of people there's the people that are like this is great i love this oh, i don't have to deal with people i hate people and then there's the people that are like corona what's that i don't even like beer you should check out my new whatever. And then there's the people that are, I'm dying. Why aren't you acting like you're dying too? It's that all, all three. Yeah. And no, and that's, and that's so true because, you know, we're all humans. We may like different things and have different things in common and whatnot, but we're all individuals when it comes down to it. So that's, that's extremely important when finding a mate, uh, finding someone you want to spend the rest of your life with. If, if you're a hardcore monogamous like I am, uh, I don't understand, you know, no, no offense to my polyamorous friends. I, my ex tried to get me into that. No, thank you. Uh, but it, it's 
that's the most important thing in a relationship is letting the individual be an individual, I think. Yeah, and I, I think uh, that kind of goes to those old-fashioned beliefs that once you marry a guy, then you chain, change him and train him. It sets, it's, it's hard to accept someone for what they are, but it's very important because we want the same for other people to accept us. Yeah, exactly. Acceptance. I can't say that enough. Acceptance. And, and uh, acceptance comes with understanding. And understanding, I believe, comes with listening, like you were talking about when we first started. It's really hard. And, and I think when people try, they're going to think, wow, this is challenging. And maybe they'll, they'll give up on it because the brain is going in so many different directions, especially when they're talking to someone they're attracted to. So she's talking and he's going, shit, I got to think of something to say that's really funny. Uh, what's really funny? There's a joke. Yeah. There's that meme. What was that meme about? And then, and we're, then by we're, the time we're too we're busy trying to impress you and we're not actually listening. Right. It, but I think in general, it's hard to it's hard to listen because there's just so much going on up here. I know that's for me. It's it's even true in any context. I'm thinking about so many different things, and that's that's the thing to remember with most women is that there's like I, I like to refer to the brain as like a house, and there's someone in every single room doing something, and and that's what you're dealing with is just chaos up here. You know, a person's dancing in the kitchen, and this person's clogging the bathroom, and it's just like all this stuff is going on, um, and that's, I think that that's perfect. It's, it's a little intimidating because it's like, how do I get her attention when, when all this is going on? No, you're, you're completely right. It's like I say, we're kind of dumb children. We're one track mind. We men are not known for multitasking where women are just born chaos and you're always multitasking. There's always multiple things going on in your life, in your, in your thought process. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's why, look, you, you treat your women right, guys, because guess what? They always got someone waiting on the side. Whether they want them waiting on the side or not, there's always somebody in waiting. <laughs> a am I right, though? It, it's, it's true uh, a high percentage of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I, all my friends, I look back at the, you know, my, my really good friends, female friends that were like just, ridiculously smoking hot and like that I never went after I, it wasn't a friend zone thing because I was never after and we we're just friends and just just watching them deal with guys and it's just like oh you're gonna lose her bro you're gonna lose her and then she snatched up she got a new she got a new bow in a week it's it's tough right now with social media no matter what decision you make you're gonna second guess yourself every single day so it's it's tough when now as soon as you say you're in a relationship everybody's flocking like oh really maybe you and i didn't try it enough and maybe we could go back there and then you got all this stuff coming in so you're trying to focus on your relationship but now there's a thousand different things coming at you it's so damn complex like and, and, and I've watched Facebook literally cause divorces and cause all kinds of breakups. So you bring up a great point. Uh, what's some really good advice you have out there for both sides of the aisle in any relationship, whether you're straight, uh, a man, a woman, you're lesbian, you're bisexual, social media is causing all kinds of issues in relationship. What's a good way to avoid that? Um, I am so big on not... Um, announcing the stages of your relationship on social media. For me personally, I just think for the most part, the, the need to be like, this is my baby. I love him. He's the best. He's so wonderful. I mean, where is that even coming from? Are you insecure about the relationship and you feel the need to tell people? Because all you're doing by announcing it is bringing his ex-girlfriends out of the, um, you know, out of the bushes to come and, and, and try again because nothing's more desirable than a guy that now has somebody. And they're, you know, always, they're always Instagram stalking their ex. Oh, yeah. So you're just increasing his real estate and creating problems for yourself. And you guys are in a real relationship in real life. You're right there. Why do you have to, you know, make it a virtual thing? Why do you have to announce, you know, from the rooftops, like everything that's going on? And it's so it's not real because no one, very few people go on Facebook and they're like, today he left the toilet seat up again. Fuck that guy. You know, that doesn't happen 
as much as the like I, I, I want to see those posts. Those are the, I love real <laughs> stuff like that. That's the Facebook, that's the Facebook I want right there. I know, right? And I think that would actually make people feel a lot better if we had some type of real platform. I think that's what people are trying to create, but because like Instagram is saying we don't want those, those beautification filters. Because Snapchat is amazing. I don't, you can just look like a drowned rat and turn on a filter and voila. It's amazing. Yeah, it does amazing it, things for myself. Yes, it's amazing for everybody. It's um, it's crazy, but it, it's a little over the top. Right. Well, which is fair. It's funny you brought that up because, like, I've been on the every social media when it first came out, and before anyone even knew what Snapchat was, I was on there. And as soon as I realized, like, oh, this is just for pretty much sending each other naked pictures, I like got rid of it. But then. A few years later, it really blew up, and people were treating it like a proper social media. It's like TikTok now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I finally, joined, drank the Kool Aid and joined. Are, are you on TikTok? What's your TikTok yeah. handle so people can follow your TikTok? Yeah, I kept saying I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But I mean, <laughs> everyone is doing it, and it's kind of fun. You just make these little videos. It's basically editing software meets. A social media app and that's their little niche is that you can you feel like an editor and edit together your your stuff and, and they put like little comedic aspects they're very conservative though they took down three of my videos already and i was wearing clothes it was like lingerie hmm. I, that's interesting i haven't heard of them do it uh, well they have for a few things but i haven't heard it for anything anyone in lingerie so i find that Weird and interesting, but well, yeah. Uh, but I did, I did, I did enjoy the video you shared of the uh, getting mad at the boyfriend for not recognizing that you've been working out your booty so hard. Oh yes, yeah. That's um, we just shot some more comedy stuff on like a Zoom call, which I thought was really cool. I can't wait to see how that looks. I mean, everything is taking on this virtual aspect, which, as we said, is so great for introverts. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not an introvert, so I miss public. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm definitely an introvert. So you're not, so this isn't just uh, destroying you mentally. What do you do though on the regular, you know, before quarantine? What do you do for your own mental health? I have to get up and work out. I really just have to. Um, I, I, you, you, we say that we learn a lot about ourselves in these situations. I mean, when I gave birth, six weeks later, it was. I'm at the gym. I have to be at the gym. I don't care if I slept 30 minutes. I got to go. Same thing with this. They locked us up in quarantine. I have to be an hour in my kid's room and I have to work out or, or like my, I go from zero to a hundred like this and I get so upset with people for stupid things. You know, it's, you could be like, well, what do you think of that? You know, I can't that's right by you. I just can't. Not. And you're just upset and hysterical. And you're like, why am I this upset over something? Oh, like, I really just, it's, it's my sanity medication. Like I really need it. And even just the like turn, having spa time in your bathroom and putting on a sheet mask and just, especially as a, as a mom of a toddler, like I need these little moments that are just for me so that I can be a better mom for him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh everything when it comes to mental health has to do with mind, body, and spirit. It's all connected. And that's why I, I miss working out. Like I was getting some of the, getting in some of the best shape of my life when all my health went to hell. And so now I just miss being able to even do a simple push-up. Is there anything you could do? Um, no, like it's, nope. yeah, I can't, I'm, uh, I tried tuning my guitar the other day and I was in so my, I was in so much pain by the time I got my guitar tuned that I couldn't even play it. That's so unfortunate, particularly for the guitar, because I really think that's so good for you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, <laughs> so we were mental health, like it's, it, as a former musician, I'm even wearing my own shirt for your show here. Uh, <laughs> but as a former musician, I've been, I've been singing, I was singing before I was talking. Music has been in my life every single day. Since all this happened, I can't make it to, because I can't control my vocal cords for some reason now, like uh, by, uh, I, I sound like I'm slurring my words every now and then. I sound like I'm drunk because I talk I too much. I haven't heard that. I'm having a good day. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, one of my previous podcasts I just uploaded, like even just in the intro, I sounded like I was drunk because I can't control my vocal cords all the time. So now I can't even make it to the chorus of a song, let alone one of my own songs, uh, to sing. So 
the last two years of not being able to sing on a daily basis has weighed on me emotionally and mentally in ways I never ever would have imagined uh, my entire life. And so that's why it's important to kind of, you know, find new avenues to help with your mental health and uh, like restarting a podcast that you stopped 10 years ago and, and putting it up there to give myself something to do and some interaction with some lovely, wonderful humans that I'm meeting uh, on Instagram. I really admire your self-awareness. You have, it, it's very rare in, unfortunately, men these days. Um, and you, you, you recognize the, the need when one thing, it becomes not a, a stream for you that to go elsewhere and to, to seek that for yourself and to see like this part of me needs something. And that's such a big piece to finding happiness. It really isn't about how much you have or what you can do, because those aren't the people that are the happiest. Quite the contrary. Yeah, uh, you can you can lose everything. You can lose everything in, in a heartbeat. And like, you know, some of the best advice I ever got. Uh, I was hanging out with Jeff Timmons from Ninety Eight Degrees, where we were in the same recording studio when I was recording my album, and he was doing his album. Uh, he's coming up on, uh, I think, the podcast after you, I'll be recording with him in a few days. Uh, oh, cool. And we're out to eat in this restaurant in uh, somewhere in Orange County, and he just gets mobbed by a bunch of young girls, fans. And after they all left, like he, he took photos with all of them, signed autographs for all of them, like didn't let it bug our dinner or anything. And I was just like, wow, dude, that was like really cool and impressive to watch you with your fans. And like, are you always, like this gracious with them <laughs> and he's like well yeah man because like look we we were up on top we were up there you know you, you had in sync backstreet boys in 98 degrees in the boy band era man they were huge but then all that went away and and so why would you not be good to your fans like they're still with him to this day and they support every single single album he has so like that was such a huge life lesson uh so like how important are your fans and all your followers out there to you they're they're mind-blowingly important they really are i i can't even i always get down to this when i'm feeling down on myself i think how much um how great they are compared to the real people that i see on a daily basis those aren't the people that lift me up. Those aren't the people that, th in fact, those are often the people that kick me when I'm down, that ridicule me. Like, and these are the people that are in my circle, you know, that you have to. Your, your inner talk circle. To. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's, it's the fans, it's the, the love from sometimes complete stranger that just blows my mind. The, the love and compassion that they're capable of, that sometimes your own family members aren't capable of, it's just. Sometimes, of course, it makes me feel a little insecure, too, because I wonder, it's just because they create, they, I did what I was talking about earlier, how you can just fill in the blanks and create this perfect person. I'm like, maybe if they knew me in real life, they'd be kicking me when I'm down, too. And maybe that, you know, and, and you feel obligated never to talk about, um, when you're really down, you feel like you can't really admit it. Because you feel like everyone else is so down, especially like right now. Mm -hmm. So the last thing in the world I want to do is, is complain about anything. And then I think that creates a problem because you feel like, because everyone sometimes needs to vent. They need to like, oh, yeah. you can't just always be like rainbows and orgasms and life is beautiful. Like sometimes you're like, this sucks. This just sucks. It just, it is what it is. And it I hate it. No, and, and, and you're right. It does suck. You women get multiple orgasms. We get one. Yet men think they're superior. That's how stupid we are. Y'all get <laughs> multiple orgasms. We're lucky to get one, and we think we're better than you. Yeah, and, and ours comes in different shapes and sizes, too. So it's like, it's yeah, we, we definitely got you beat in that area. And I don't know if you already know this, but the vaginal walls get thinner as you age, which means that orgasms could actually get better with age for us. Which is why yeah. in your 30s and 40s, uh, y'all get out of control sometimes. Yes, uh, exactly. In a good way. Also, look, look, since you're a sex expert and there's guys out there, look, the clitoris is not a myth. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Do some people still think that, is there a person? I thought the G-spot they're kind of back and forth on, but 
I can't imagine anyone saying the clit they, is a they, they don't understand either. They don't understand the importance of either, and nor is the G-spot the same on every woman. No, and that's why there's so many, you know, is there, isn't there, because because there's so many variables. And that's that goes back to what we were saying, how people have to understand. They, I, I can't stress this enough when it comes to sexual partners. Always start over. Don't be like my girlfriend before, like these three things, so I'm just going to keep doing these three things. No, she'd hate those three things. Like you don't even, it's a whole new map. And right. I know that's a little bit scary, but it's fun to get to know the map and, you know, learn, learn new things about this and what makes this tick. And having, just having that thought process makes you a better lover because you're not stuck in this tried but true thing that only works for this one to 10 people or whatever it was. Right, exactly. And the biggest erogenous zone on any woman is her brain anyway. So true. That's why being a good listener is the start. Oh yeah. You let a girl feel like she has it. She's having a good conversation. It is the ultimate foreplay. And it's really easy. It's like, as soon as she gets animated, as soon as she starts talking about something where you're like, Ooh, she's really passionate about this. So, uh, you know, what else? And, and, and make your question. Push that happen. button. Yes. Push that button. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then she gets happier and more excited. I think just finding things that bring those, those, topics out in her that's why i really recommend just asking unique questions that like what would you do if you won the lottery tomorrow where would you like to go on vacation and why like those they sound silly but they get her thinking about italy and taking a bike ride through the vineyards or whatever she wants to do you know yeah, and she's, then she's, she's got 15 favorite colors that's a stupid question don't ask her what her <laughs> favorite color is <laughs> plus where are you gonna go with that oh blue what what would you like to make blue it's like where it's well, very dead end you're walking away with blue balls that's the only thing you're getting after <laughs> that conversation the theme is blue <laughs> okay um well what other like as a sex expert and a relationship coach you know what what's one of the key things that men just don't do um i, I would I would say besides accurate. the dishes taking out the trash and normal chores when you ask the first time like and not listening what's something men can focus on i think just um i think the effort is is either uh it's hyper effort or lack of effort it's very hard to find a middle ground take dating profiles really put some effort into your bio put some effort into the things you've said don't make it a book don't make it something that you know it's like oh i have homework i have to read this thing make it short but but informative concise you know throw in some humor if you don't have your own sense of humor steal someone else's you know grab a joke from somewhere just toss it in there you want to like evoke you That's know the best advice talk. ever really that really is good advice if you're not funny it's, just steal it yeah <laughs> i mean you know work with what you have yeah no and once again yeah no know, know your number know your limits a little self-realization goes a long way I, I, when I, if you looked at like some of my online dating profiles and you looked at the emails that I get, I would say like 90% of them are one word, you know, just very hey. minimal. Yep. Just, Hey, and that's it. Or it's a copy paste that, you know, they send to everybody. I mean, you don't have to send just finding something in her bio where you go, okay, that's something that's unique about her. I'm going to find a way to put that into the conversation. I'm gonna say something slightly different and witty. It can just be like three, four sentences so you don't feel like you're writing, you know, it takes you an hour to write every single girl because then you're putting so much into it and then you get disappointed. But you really, it's kind of a numbers game. That little bit of effort, you know, spread it out into like 40 different and you'll get a response. Yeah, no, and you're right. It's like, it's like I learned doing uh, sales door to door. Like you, you got to knock on 10 doors for one person to even listen to you. Same. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, there's girls get so many emails. Sometimes she just doesn't see it or you, you're too late. She already found somebody, but online dating is so great. I'm such a big fan. And, and for introverts particularly, cause it's, it's, you can hide behind your computer screen, but it's, it's so awesome because nowhere in the world can you walk into a club and be like, I only want to meet girls that are between 
30 and 35, I want them this height, I want this, I want that, I want them this religious, I want this, and, and just, there, your search. Right, and, and, and a lot of those are important details, not a superficial thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like when girls want someone who wants kids, like, it's, they always say don't ask within the first three dates, and it's like, you don't have that kind of time, tick tock, tick tock. Like yeah. You want to be able to just search, like, make sure that he wants kids, and then, then you don't have to approach it right away you don't have to have that heavy conversation way at the beginning because you know okay our ducks are in a row we want the same thing right yeah but at the same time also don't give too much away and uh like too many details your entire life story and all your darkness on the first date either epic point you always like mysterious is sexy and i think a lot of people make the mistake like i feel a connection with her so we're just like vomiting our entire life story at one another and say like, you don't I've been need guilty. To I've been guilty. I've even done that. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Me too. Yeah. And it feels great in that moment. But then what goes really fast, you know? Yeah. Sorry. And, that and was no, no. Fear, wasn't it? No, 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 not at all. Uh, but no, and you're true. And, and it's uh, uh, I, I like to call it the purge. People purge and they truth vomit. Just like it was like, whoa, way too much information. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. I, I did that so much in my dating, um, way at the beginning, uh, because obviously I have a real name too, uh, and, and I have my alias and my real name, and then I would meet people and be like, I need you to know, okay, that I'm actually Erica Jordan, I have this name, and I did this, 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 and if you look on this site, you'll see that I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and the guy was just like, oh my God, what, what? God, it's just way too much, you know, but in my head, I'm like, I need to tell this person every single thing about me so that if they don't like one of those things and they're going to walk away. Well, I'm, that way there's I'm, no surprises later too, is what you're probably thinking. But I'm screwing myself because it, it's, it's a very uncomfortable feeling to be vomited at like that, you know, it's, it, and it makes you seem like, okay, if you're vomiting this many secrets at me, like what else do you have? It just makes you look like you just have a, a closet full of skeletons and it's and it's not that the emotion you want to evoke right away like I need you to know these things about me and now you're gonna hear them whether you like it or not like it's not a very organic conversation no no I mean Clark Kent just didn't walk around with taking his super his glasses off and being like hey babe I'm Superman <laughs> although for him that really would have worked that, that would for, for him that would have worked nerds anyway uh, <laughs> since this is a very nerdy eccentric po podcast with uh you know it's written behind me on the wall here uh well except for this one this i just got this my friend just did this for me live on a podcast the other day because Ooh. he used to work with uh stan lee and he's like what do you want me to draw i'm like i don't know draw stripperella he's like I, you know, I did more than Stripperella. I did Wolverine too, you know, and I'm like, fine, draw a Wolverine getting a lap dance from Stripperella. <laughs> that's so cool. So that's my new prized possession. You know, I don't actually know this, but is there a, a like a Comic-Con themed dating platform? Because if there isn't, there really should be. Um, I believe there's a, a friend actually runs in Orange County, uh, runs a nerd Comic-Con dating, like, date night type of thing that they do like once a, once a month so yeah well, that's in person that's that, a little well you got to get these introverts in person sometimes like. sure <laughs> but i mean the cosplay and whatnot the, the effort they put I, I, into those I believe, costumes right i believe there's something out there but i'm not sure who's done it's it and how legit it, it is sounds like so, sounds like we're about to start our own uh project and business sweet perfect yes <laughs> I love it. Well, then let, let's let's get to the wrap up section of this podcast then, and get just slightly nerdy with you, and kind of see what your nerd cred is as uh, as, <laughs> uh -oh. as someone you know from the Playboy world and has done so many cool things, and you know been in movies, and you're an actress and a sex expert. I'm really curious. Who's your favorite hero? Ooh, um. I have a little, I'm a little biased because I just, I know she's not really a hero, but I love my Harley Quinn, you know? You know what? You don't, you don't even have to back that up. Everybody loves Harley Quinn. She's, she's, she has become the, the anti-hero type figure. And before that she was a 
huge beloved villain as it was. So like, if you were, if you're like, hey, Harley's my girl, that's like universally accepted these days. She's pretty, I just, I'm disappointed with the most recent movie. I was waiting for that for years. And it just, mm. So you're, okay, oh, you're a Harley fan. You ever, you ever, yeah. you, do you dress up as her every now and then for photo shoots or for Halloween? I have every single one of her costumes. Cause you know, every time she comes out with a movie, she has a new costume. So all of them, that's, I just can't even toss them. That she's just, Margot Robbie was a good, um, was a good person to play that role too. Yeah, she got a lot of flack, but I, I thought, she, I thought she was a good pick. I haven't watched the latest movie. I keep hearing, more po from my professional friends in the industry, I keep hearing more positive things than I was expected to hear about. Really? So, yeah, so That's I actually, so I actually got to watch it here real soon. So check it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I find, it took me forever to get around to watch the Joker, uh, Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, which was epic uh, storytelling. Did you like Suicide Squad? Um, no. Um, I liked Harley in it though. I liked her in it. I just did, you know, I did not like Jared Leto's Joker. It, it just took me, it completely takes me out of the experience. I just didn't like it. it. Design, acting, everything, the writing, editing, the filming, like, you know, not all on him. So, but, and, and I'm not, I'm not one of those crazy nerds either, too. Like, I have a general rule. Entertain me. Make sure I'm entertained. And Suicide Squad just didn't entertain me the way I wanted it to. And, and it's just, but a lot of the DC movies have it, because I'm a, I'm a hardcore Superman fan. Superman's my guy. He's my number one. And the my entire life, like deep, one of the best movie moments ever was watching Superman just backhand Batman or Batfleck, as everyone likes to call him, <laughs> Ben Affleck, and he just goes flying into a cop car like it was nothing. Like that was that was the most epic Superman moment ever <laughs> because everybody's always like, "Ooh, Batman's better than Superman." And I was just like, "Well, he just swatted him like a fly." <laughs> <laughs> so it's those little moments like that. Um, so then. Harley's your hero. Who's your favorite villain? Because every hero is only as good as their opposite. I mean, she's, she, I feel like she's a villain. She is a villain, really. I mean, she kind of, she has a heart, but um, for the most part, she does, I mean, we can't really call, compare her to Superman and Batman. She's a bad girl. Right, right. So, yes, <laughs> Harley's just your girl. She's your favorite hero and your favorite villain. Well, but, like I would, I guess I would say Catwoman if if I have to pick someone a little, yeah, because she's that's fun. Yeah, yeah, you got a favorite Catwoman? Like, I mean, I'd love them all. You can't, go, but the first time I saw Halle Berry in that suit, I was just like, oh! See, I, I thought she was like, oh, I was so excited, and then I thought the movie wasn't as good as it could have been, but her in the role, ah. <sighs> But the the other things around it, it was like, oh, it could be a little. I think they mess up because they put so much hype. Hey, it's like relationships. See, bring it up full circle. <laughs> oh, God, I love you so much. Uh, okay, well then, who is your real life hero? Who who inspires you? Like a real person. My real life hero. Um, who the first name? Like I'm I'm trying to stall because the first name that came to mind was Obama. I mean, that he, choice. he became the first African-American president, and I know that he's received more death threats than pretty much any president ever. Um, Absolutely. We put so much on him, and he just did, he's the reason I have health insurance. You know, he's such a legend to me. He's so art. He has a gift with words. He just, when he speaks, you, uh, like I have major ADD. I'm always like all oh, over the place. When he speaks, it's just yes, what you're saying. It's great. Like he uh, that and that we completely lost that right now. <laughs> I yeah no, and I know what you're saying too because I always expect to uh, expect. See, brain things not working. Uh, <laughs> I always respect a good orator because you know that's that's the stock I come from. Uh, Mom and dad were teachers, but before that, my dad was a radio personality, uh, referred to as the golden voice of Lake Powell. Uh, so I, I respect people that are good, are good speakers, especially public speakers. I'm not a great public speaker. That's why I was a musician. That was easier for me. Uh, but, but at the same time, <laughs> like I thought, I thought W2 Bubba was going to be the dumbest talking president we would ever have. I never, ever in a million years imagined we would end up with Trump. 
I mean, and the arguments I have with people, I'm like, he just told people that we need to look into injecting disinfectants. I'm like, no, he didn't say that. He was just kidding. He was kidding during a, a conference on during a pandemic. That's not a good argument. Like, and he wasn't kidding. It's amazing. And yeah. now there's the, I just read that the CDC is announcing more poison calls because people are gurgling with bleach. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Wow. And that ability to, to have conversations with people and make them feel good is so important. It's important with relationships. It's important with politics. It's important with business. And, and the person in charge right now is very much like, we're number one. We're the best. You suck. And that's what comes across. And so you're just, he's just pissing everybody off. And Obama had this way of like, Kumbaya, let's all get together. We can do this. Like it's just the emotions he evoked. Like I'm not even coming at you from a hundred percent political belief, this political belief, that. I mean just from the heart, just as the a representative. Emotions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And well, and because you know, I say this all the time, words are power. Your 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 words, you don't know how your words are gonna affect other other people and you know talking about the whole mental health thing and whatnot like look my nickname is sunshine which is easy because casey and the sunshine band and i've always been a happy-go-lucky person but you know in the last six months you know who do i talk about to my darkness with when i'm everybody else's sunshine and they come to me when they're in a dark spot and they're feeling suicidal and they need someone to talk to like we all need someone to talk to and you never know what how your words are affecting someone else because words are so powerful it starts your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become habits. It's so true. And I think when you tr start preaching the law of attraction to people about how what you think and what you focus on and what you talk about, that shapes your life. And people just don't want to accept that because it just seems too easy, too frou-frou. You know, they, they, they throw that in along with like horoscopes and stuff. And it's, but it's, it's so true. Yeah, the energy you put out is the energy that you receive on a personal level, a love level, and a spiritual level from the universe. Big time. But then you look at people like Trump who are just vomiting nonsense and they seem to be getting rewarded. And it's like, how do you continue to, to teach people that or to point them in that direction? Like, I'm so grateful my son is too because I don't know how I would answer if he said, well, he's president. He bullies people every day. You said not to bully people. He does it. And, and it's, why is he allowed to do it? So if I do it, I become president. And, and you said not to lie, but he lies every day. So it's I, I'm so glad I don't have to answer that right now. And I feel sorry for the people that do have to, because it, it goes against what you and I are saying right now, that it, to, to, you know, to, to have that right place here. But who knows? Maybe karma is just taking its time. Yeah, there's a, karma can be slow, and then there's instant karma. I do love instant karma when it happens in front yeah. of me. Those are my favorite life moments. But, I mean, and, and you're right. You bring up a valid point. Like, I, uh, I got nieces and nephews, and uh, I don't have my own kids. I've always wanted my own family. But I can't imagine the stress of being a parent in today's uh, society and everything going on on how you teach those kinds of values with everything they're actually seeing. Oh yeah, like I look at what's popular right now and it's, it's very depressing. I was looking at um, some of my competition, for example, and there's a Dr. Jess who has a PhD. She's fascinating. I think she's so sexy, so classy, so wonderful. Um, but, you know, pretty small following, like not a lot of people are tuning in. And then there's, you know, this other girl who's very like cartoonish. And, and when you listen to her podcast, it's, yo, what's up? We talking about dick, dick. You heard me. I like that dick, 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 dick. And I'm watching it going, no, no. Two million views? What's going on here? She's Stupid. just been saying the word dick for like five minutes. Like, we are stupid creatures, like I said, many, many, <laughs> many a times. You're right, well, you're not. In general, in general. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, you're not giving yourself enough credit. You're not one I'm, of those. I'm not. I'm smarter than most dudes out there. And, I, like, I know it. But then again, look, my dad died when I was young. My mom's a widower, and I have three older sisters. I was raised by nothing but women. So, like, I have a, I have a healthy respect for women as it is. Major advantage. Yeah, exactly. I, I like um, but where?
can everybody go find your social media, find your personal website so they can become a fan only and get some really good life coaching and sexpert advice? Yeah, you can come to virtualsexpert.com. That's my, that's the mothership. Um, I have uh, Instagram, Erica Jordan with a K, Twitter, Erica for Jordan. That's the only platform I allow myself to get political. I try to keep it there and people hate that. They're like, no, you've shown your boobs. You're not allowed to have a political opinion. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I do have OnlyFans and Patron. Patron is my current favorite. And I just started a TikTok. Oh, my God. How confusing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and it, it's all there. And go to her main website. So that way you can go to your different social media from there, right? Yes. Absolutely. And then, and uh, in, any last words of advice for all the, all, all the boys out there that are trying to become men? I think we've given them some contradicting information here. We're like, be positive, but not too positive. And, and, and be confident, but know when to shut up and just listen. <laughs> I think it can be very confusing. Um, I think the best advice, like to wrap it all up, is that you need practice to get good at anything. And the best way to practice is to practice on people that, like, I don't choose your crush from the last 15 years, you know, and practice on her. Like, maybe somebody that you don't care as much about sounds bad, but just to get that conversation going and to it really, really does help. I mean, anything you want to get good at, you practice, right? So it's practice makes perfect. Uh, uh, quite frankly, I think that's probably some of the best advice I've ever heard is like, not just like, oh, I finally got, I finally got the balls to ask out my 15 year crush. I'm going to immediately ask, go hit on some stranger first or, yes. or a female friend you're not interested in, tell them the truth and be like, hey, look, would this work as a line on you? Because quite frankly, pickup lines don't work most of the time anyway. Be yourself. It, but then they work really well on others. And I think by doing what I suggested with practice, you get better at reading people because that comes with time. And then you go, oh, this girl, I feel like this approach might work. And it just comes. It's not, some people have an amazing natural ability for it and they're lucky, okay? But the rest of us have to, Go, like if we go and we approach a hundred different people by the end of a hundred it's like i've really learned a lot about you know these certain things they were doing they tended to mean this and you just accumulate this database of and and then your subconscious does it on its own you don't have to overthink it and that's the goal perfect yeah absolutely uh that is some of the best advice you're ever going to get out there, guys. Make sure you go follow Erica Jordan on all of her social media. Join her fans only. Join her Patreon. Uh, give her your support. Give her your love. Don't be a creep in her DMs. And uh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it was my pleasure. And uh, hopefully I get to catch up with you sometime uh, in real life. And we'll see you somewhere down the road. <laughs>